60 seconds. Hello everyone. Welcome back for more. Let's play You Don't Know Jack. Mock 2. Gameplay functions as follows. Well, you are already familiar with the roles. Excellent. We will begin immediately. I wouldn't be skipping past this, but again, way this too much problem hanging up. Soup for the soul in hell. One thousand dollars at stake on this one. Well, here we are in our cliches episode, and cliches. I hope it's hot enough for you. <laughs> it ain't the heat; it's no, humidity. This is a hot episode, but as we all know, it's not necessarily the heat that counts, right? If in hell, it's not so much the heat, but the humidity. Which of these should the damn Ned souls there watch out for on the weatherman's five million day forecast? The heat index, the jet stream, the Fujita scale, or the barometric pressure? Hmm. Yeah. Um, no. None of those say really tell me right much about humidity. When you combine the actual temperature oh. with the humidity, okay. you get the often misunderstood heat index. Welcome everyone to hell. You'll notice it's hot, but let me tell you it's a dry heat. Okay, I lied. It's actually more like being trapped in Liberace's armpit while he sits in a sauna wearing a rubber suit. <laughs> Comfy. Category's gonna be now that definitely smells like teen spirit i'm gonna make this one is a that a cliche bucks. okay now i want to see some pom-poms waving out there as you finish up this cheer for me we've got spirit yes we do we've got spirit now please tell me what line completes this exceedingly common pep rally cheer before the painful memories come rushing back how yes, we do about how about you? you and so do you or yeah. shame on you the cheer goes we've got spirit yes we do we've got spirit how about you and it goes back and, and forth. And if my high school is any indication, the amount of spirit depended on how short the pom-pom girl's skirts were. And how much alcohol was in the stands. I'm that helped. this one, shut up, just shut up. And this one's going to be worth $2,000. You know, I get the feeling that some cliches have been around a lot longer than we think. For instance, take a look at this newspaper clipping. First, uh, shout out to Jesus for this victory against the Spanish Armada. We took it one battle at a time. I said there's no I in Navy, and some people really stepped up for us. So, what do you think? Who most likely made this quote at a press conference? An Irish officer, an English officer, an Italian officer, or a German officer? The English were the ones that beat the Spanish, weren't they? Uh, that quote came from the head coach of the English Navy that kicked the Spanish Armada's butt. Yeah, it was a really exciting fight, but, you know, to be honest, most people just watched it to check out the hilarious Spanish Inquisition Doritos commercial at halftime. Which probably would happen these days. This one's called Give of Yourself, Your Icy Cold Self. And this one's going to be worth $3,000. Flex those fingers, here it comes. Which of the following people truly has cold hands, warm heart? Salvation Army worker with Riggs disease, Red Cross worker with Raynaud's disease, Greenpeace worker with Bright's disease, or Peace Corps worker with Graves' disease. Sadly, I don't know what any of those four diseases are. I don't know. Here's the one you didn't pick. Raynaud's disease makes your hands and feet icy cold. But hey, look at it hmm. this way. You can walk around carrying raw meat. <laughs> Get ready, because you're going to play a When Did Happen. All when right, I'm going to show you how you've done this When Did Happen thing before. When Great. Did Happen. Let's see how much you remember. The category for this When Did Happen is jump, dive, and kick it. All right, don't wig out, chicks and dudes, but you better get into the groove and remember your fancy slang if you grok my meaning, because we've got this here little phrase popularized in the 60s. Check it. Groovy. Now tell me, were people more likely to hear this phrase before the crazy 60s kids and their grooviness? Would they be more likely to hear it after the funny talk? Or has this phrase never been a part of the popular lexicon at all? Grody to the max. Yeah, that's a little later. Take a chill pill. Chimpanzee. Never heard that one. Hot diggity dog. You're the bee's knees, moidal. There it is. Well, 
embarrassing fun, music. Huh? Let's see what happens. Hey, you aced it. That's cash in your piggy bank. Well, I don't know about you, but I really enjoyed that. Shall we get back to the game? Six. Coming at you, pulling a Yorkshire Terrier out of your hat. You get it right, I'm putting you up $2,000. Put your head between your knees, because we're going down. If New York street magician and close personal friend of mine, David Blaine, wanted to teach his old dog one of his tricks, which of these could he do? Bury him alive under a city street, feed him a bowl of swarming killer bees, have him electrocuted in an electric chair, or tie him to a rock at the bottom of the Pacific. Oh, which one did David Blaine do? I think he went to the bottom of the sea, didn't he? You would tie a dog to a rock at the bottom of the Pacific, you heartless Blaine bastard. would. That's how you get rid of a bag of cats. <laughs> For the curious, here's the right answer. My buddy David is a famous street magician who, in his most famous trick, buried himself alive under a New York City street for a whole week, which would have been a really impressive trick if New York didn't have all those folks buried alive under its streets already. That's a good point. Seven. Next, monkey see, monkey do. You get this one, you pocket hey, two thousand hey, bucks. Hey, hey, we're the monkeys. Think fast. It's question time. Which member of the monkeys would be the most susceptible to having actual wool pulled over his eyes? Dreamy Davy Jones, dorky Peter Tork, intellectual Mike Nesmith, or crazy Mickey Dolenz? I'm pretty sure Peter was the one with the with the knit cap. You got it. No, you don't. So which Let me one show was you what it? I Nesmith? Whether he was hanging out in his swank pad or cavorting on the beach, Mike Nesmith always wore that freaking wool cap. I'd imagine after wearing that bad boy all day long in the hot sun, he must definitely have been the funky monkey. Eight. Here's a little something I call warning. Tobacco companies may be stupid. You get it right, you get 2K. Open wide. What is the straw that broke Joe Camel's back? Charges of publicly displaying a phallus. Charges of enticing children to smoke. Charges of promoting marijuana use. Or charges of selling cigarettes to Cuba. I'm pretty sure the enticing children got him. Back in 97, my close personal friends at tobacco giant R.J. Reynolds had to pay a huge settlement because of charges that Joe Camel was targeting children. <laughs> In response, R.J. Reynolds came up with a new mascot, Gil Goody, who got straight A's, did community service, went to bed early, and got beat up after school every day. <laughs> okay, stretch yourself out and get sight, because this smoke, one's though. a diss or dat. The name of this diss or dat is, Hi, I'm a fish and I have a drinking problem. Okay, now, okay, you've been through this. I'm just going to put your 30 seconds on the clock then. Mix drink for trouble. <laughs> Cherry Barb. My die. Spotted Rasmara. Caribbean Grasshopper. Last one. Saddleback Butterfly. Perfect. And with time to spare, no less. Animal Here Crossing taught me about half, two or three of those fish. There you go. You put that under your mattress or something, okay? All right, some more Jack. Ten. The category is high fiving Hindu gods, and this one's worth three thousand dollars. There are a few of them you can so high five a lot. Here, that a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. Well then, if the Hindu god Vishnu has a bird in each hand, how much would they be worth in the bush? Four, eight, ten, or twenty? How many hands does it have? So you don't lose any sleep over it. The Hindu god Vishnu yeah, has four I was just... hands, so with a bird in each one, mm. that adds up to roughly eight in the bush. And that's worth about, uh, what, buck fifty? Somewhere in there. I actually did hit the button, but it was just a hair late this category to actually is get the Margaret points. Hatcher. How does two thousand dollars sound? Oh, okay, well. politicians are eggheads. That's a given. But... Which of these sayings best describes the attendance of U.S. cabinet members to a State of the Union address? Kill the goose that lays the golden eggs. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. You have to break eggs to make an omelet. Or don't count your eggs before they're hatched. I'm not really sure what point the attendance of the cabinet members... Well, that'll make an exciting have. story, won't it? 
Oh, we're so very, very clever, aren't we? During a State of the Union address, one cabinet member is left out of the audience in case a massive disaster ah. takes out everyone in the Capitol building. Boy, can you imagine? That might someday leave us with the Secretary of Agriculture as the president. My fellow Americans, we do not need to be alarmed by the recent discovery that India possesses cabbage. Well. The category's gonna be, get a piece of the rock yourself, jerk. 2,000 bucks for a correct answer. Eyes forward, we're going. Considering the name of the month's traditional birthstone, when might you have the best luck getting blood from a stone? March, August, September, or December? I still have no clue about birthstones. I'm kind of tired of completely random guessing. I could have given you some cash if you picked this one. The bloodstone is the traditional birthstone of March, so you may want to start squeezing stones in the month of March. Hey, and remember, you tend to get a lot more blood if you squeeze really sharp stones. That would help, yes. Thirteen. I'm calling this one. If you can't beat a dead horse, beat a live one. Three thousand dollars for this don't one. Don't beat hey, horses. Hey, did you ever hear that cliche, don't look a gift horse in the mouth? It's good advice. Unless your gift horse is filled with an army of Greek soldiers waiting to kill you in your sleep, then you might mm -hmm. want to take a peek. When it was given to him as a gift, who should have looked in the Trojan horse's mouth? Agamemnon, Odysseus, King Priam, or Achilles? Was it Priam? Was it? I don't think so. King Priam was the Trojan's leader. You think he would have been a little more suspicious when the Greeks left him a big wooden horse? <laughs> Particularly when you consider that only a year earlier he fell for the old bucket of water over the drawbridge joke. Over the drawbridge? Where did they? This one's called. Where's it held? Like my ferret. I got huh. two thousand dollars. Says you don't know this one. I thought water was supposed to go under the bridge. And oh, this is gonna be fun. It looks like this one's stalling on me. Give it a minute here. Any second game. Oh, oh, crap! Who'd I forget to thank? My plumber, my teachers, the star makers, or the mailman? I have no idea, but I will have to guess. The lights are on, but nobody's home. Since I didn't get to hear oh. your speech. Ow! I forgot to thank my teachers! Oh, damn it! I feel awful! They were so instrumental in molding me as a, a person. Welcome to the Jack. A little edgy, aren't we? I thought someone switched to decaf. Here, try this. I blue. did. Pretty much just water. That thing. Hey, where did I put that thing? Oh, now I remember. Those so are those who... Wait... Nope, that's not audio DC. Good things come in small packages. And no, it's not the typical desync. The game is kind of lagging out, actually displaying it. Too much of a good thing. The best things in life are free. I'm getting better at reading those, and that scares me. First things first. of beauty can't say I remember that one but it made sense no such thing as a free lunch unless you're playing bravely default then free lunch is an awesome ability especially paired up Whoa, with the pirate that attack. let's see how you jacked up your final score does it? Wow, that was an exciting game. That was a real thrill. You were the best player we've had by far. Now do me a favor, will you? Look to your left. Now look to your right. Now repeat after me. 
No, really, free lunch combined with the uh, amp strike? Oh, that's a godly freaking combo. Well, anyway, thank you for joining me for yet another buggy edition of You Don't Know Jack Mock 2. And this one will just barely squeak on to the winner's table, huh? Yeah, don't break your back there. Anyway. One of my names. I have decided your name will be Swamp Rat. Swamp Rat? Swamp Wretch. Okay. Well, anyway. Thanks for joining me, everyone. Um, Take really care. My panties I will see you Tommy, next time. You this and enjoy the commercials. That. I just hate you. Well, that's not how I dart a fox. Oh! I can't take it anymore! Sure you can. All it takes is his little turquoise pill, Mother's Little Helper. Ah, uh, Mother's Little Helper. Ma, the dog's humping the cat again! That's nice, darling. Mother's Little Helper may cause severe cramps, loss of appetite, random nosebleeds, upper thigh acne, anal weeping, electric fields of up to 12 volts, ingrown toenails, pubic hair discoloration, withering of the kidneys, tennis elbow, varicose veins, disintegration of the heart, fallen arches, premature ejaculation, night blindness, liver implosion, epileptic fits, and scurvy in over 24% of users. Here at Wackofson and Snurm, we're working for you. We understand that service is what creates customer loyalty, and we're willing to stand on our heads to keep you coming back. In fact, we'll stand on our heads, then do cartwheels. We'll juggle. We'll ride unicycles. We'll ride unicycles while twirling plates on the ends of sticks. Anything to show you that you're number one. We'll wear funny hats. We'll cover ourselves in your choice of delicious ice cream toppings and light our hair on fire. We'll hire you a band. We'll repaint your house. We'll introduce you to Mr. Robert De Niro. We'll have attractive young people of your sexual preference hand feed you grapes and fan you. Wackerson and Snurm, totally committed to serving you. Mr. Johnson's time travel elixir can take you to the future. Me? Yes, you. Really? How? Just add water and drink. Try it. Okay. It, uh, doesn't seem to be working. Ah, but just wait a moment. Okay, now look at the clock. <gasps> oh my god, it's a miracle. I'm living two seconds in the future. This stuff really works. Mr. Johnson's time travel elixir. This stuff really works. Wait, how will I survive here in this crazy future? With my simple old-fashioned ways, I'll be killed. Welcome to VH1's Behind the Song. This week, Black Sabbath. All right, Iron Man intro auditions, take one. All right, just go ahead whenever you're ready. <clears throat> I am Iron Man. Again, please? I am Iron Man. Okay, thanks. Next. Hi, I'm Iron Man. All right, thanks. Next. I am Iron Man. Next. I am Iron Man. Thank you. I'm Iron Man. Yeah, that's it, Iron Man. We'll call you. I am Iron Man. Yeah, thank you. Hello, my name is Iron Man. Next. Hi, am I? Wait. Next. Hello. Ah! And so it went to the wee hours of the evening. Uh, that's it, man. We're out of people. I don't know. Maybe we should go instrumental on the beginning. I... Uh, excuse me. I'm from the cleaners. I've got your ironing, man. Wait a minute. Tune in next week for another episode of BH1 Behind the Song. Yeah. <laughs>